This week on The Climb, homecoming on the hilltop brings out the stars. It's really great time to be able to see friends that you hadn't seen in 20 or 30 years. We talk special teams with Dennis McKnight. One of the things I always try to instill in these kids that, you know, don't take it for granted. We'll visit with defensive stalwart Taylor Thompson. And we've got an all-access pass to the Houston game. After almost two months of football, the SMU record is four and three. Most importantly, the team is three and zero oh in Conference USA. If the Mustangs are to challenge for the conference crown, they'll need consistent play in all phases of the game. Special teams have seen several highs today, he's had two today. and lows this season. To the third, it's actually who kicked it off. But as we learn in this week's five-minute meeting, special teams coach Dennis McKnight is committed to success and his players. And take them inside. Our first question, what led you to become a special teams coach? I saw in my 12 years in the league that other than the head coach, the only guy that ever talked to the entire team was a special teams coach. And that's kind of my persona. I'm a loud guy, I'm boisterous, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Let's go! The thing about special teams, I always try to impress upon the guys that I learned from Coach Gans, it's not for the faint of heart. Not everybody can play special teams or want to. So the point I try to press upon the kids is we don't get second down, we don't get third down. There's so many things that go on in special teams. There's so many situations like the Rice, uh, the Navy game, we line up to kick a field goal on third down. And we had a mishandling of the snap, first time it's ever happened in two years. But in that instance, he picked it up and he got tackled, didn't know what to do. So that was my fault because I didn't tell him before we kicked that hey, it's third down, if something bad happens, pick it up and spike it like a quarterback killing the clock, we can come back and kick it again on fourth down. So there's so many impactful decisions out there waiting to be made, and things come up that you never know, and in the heat of battle, or as Coach Gans used to say, the fog of war, you have to be prepared. What does your success in the NFL mean to these athletes? I think it's good that, uh, you know, people can look at and say it's not always the guys from a, BCS school, uh, guys that get drafted, or guys that are, you know, 6'8", 300, 14% body fat and run for two. You know, a guy that uh, works hard, uh, tries to master his technique, does things the right way, you get in the right place at the right time, you know, things can go your way. What do you think is important for today's college players to understand? Uh, nowadays, I think these young kids too much um, they look at it as a rite of passage that, well, I'm 6'4", I'm 290, I bench this, I run this, you know, I should be playing. It, it, it's not. It's still a privilege to play the game. It's an honor to play the game. And I feel that that's one of the things I always try to instill in these kids that, you know, don't take it for granted. It's back here going into the north end zone. Yep. And it's blocked. Why is the team having such great success blocking kicks? Well, it's, uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, it's a good scheme, uh, and kids, once you have a taste of success, it's easy to really want to go at it and do it. You can't wait for that part of it to come. And that's not, you know, people say, oh, look how lucky that was. He was right there when it came to him. And it's not luck because you do it every day. You go over those scenarios. You practice it. You're where you're supposed to be. You get to your technique faster than your opponent. And those things, uh, now all of a sudden, when the people watch and say, boy, those lucky Mustangs, it's not luck. We, we left yesterday. We planned for that to happen. What are your expectations for the future of the SMU program? I think the future is bright here. Uh, June is a phenomenal leader. Uh, his system works. When we get some depth on this roster, I think the expectation should be just like in Hawaii that we're uh, we should be a, a top 10 opponent uh, team. Uh, there's no reason why we can't play in a BCS bowl and expect to win conference championships every year we come to camp. Coming up next, a strong, 
very strong example of what the future holds for SMU. He has a chance, I think, to be a National Football League player. Junior defensive end Taylor Thompson may be a lot of things. Six feet, six inches tall, 276 pounds, and a weightlifting machine, the most obvious. But those who know him best just call him relentless. You have to learn how to flip a switch. You know, as soon as I step on that field, as soon as I leave that locker room before the game, you know, that switch is flipped. I'm about to go out there and play four quarters as hard as I can. He just has that desire to compete every down. He just never quits, you know. He plays the same way he plays the first snap as he does the last snap. Taylor was recruited from Prosper, Texas, where he was the number 37 ranked tight end in the nation by Rivals.com. The coaching staff saw Taylor as an outstanding athlete and recognized the opportunity to mold his raw talent into something special. When you look at the tape, you see a big guy that's fast, very athletic, and uh, tenacious throughout a football game. And so those are the kind of players that you like to recruit and you like to coach. The molding started with moving the one-time tight end to full-time defensive on, end. We felt that his true that. talent was as a defensive player. When I get to college, I'm able to focus on one position. It really allowed me more to like, hone in my skills and hone in my technique. So he uh, went over to play defense, and you know, thank goodness he did. With a singular focus, Taylor has found a home on the defensive line. As a sophomore, Taylor had 26 tackles and a team-high five-and-a-half sacks with a critical sack in the UTEP game that clinched the first SMU Bowl appearance in 25 years. He attributes his high level of success to his mentor, defensive line coach Burt Hill. Uh, I think the person that's helped me the most has been Coach Hill, my position coach. Just working with him every day, um, he really knows what he's doing. And he knows how to coach it, and he knows like what to ask for players in order to get them to achieve their goals. Uh, and he understands a lot better now where the blocks are coming from, how they're going to try to execute them on him. And uh, he does an excellent job of playing with his hands to get them on blockers, to get separation so that he can disengage the guy and make a play. And so the techniques and the things he's learning, you are what you repeatedly do. And he's been doing them now for two and three years, the same things over and over and over again. And uh, Bert's done a nice job, and he has accepted uh, uh, the, the challenge to be the best. And, and I think he's playing as well as anybody in the league right now. Doing what we've been doing for the past two and a half or three years with him every day, uh, eventually it wears on you, and eventually you start doing the technique right all the time subconsciously. When we switched to the 3-4, we needed uh, bigger defensive ends, and Taylor brings a lot of size to our defensive line that we never had before. There's a term called a motor. He's got a V12. You know, I have V8, but he, that sucker goes from start to finish, and he plays hard. As soon as that ball is snapped, I don't care how long the play is, he's going nonstop. To me, Taylor is like Howie Long. When you played Howie Long, whether you were front side or back side, whether the play was going away or to him, you better be on him because he is relentless. Middle of the field. Kick is partially blocked. It's short. Of course it was. Partially blocked. Team success isn't only about great plays. It's about great players knowing their assignments and executing them. A philosophy Taylor has taken to heart especially when opening lanes for Margus Hunt to block field goals. He's not in there to block the kick. He's not going to get the glory, but Taylor Thompson's job of driving that guard back as hard, far, and long as he can, it's, you know, it all comes together. It's all Taylor. I mean, it was all Taylor last year. I mean, I'm happy to, ha happy to have that kind of friend next, next to me who, can, who I know is going to do the right thing to uh, help me to get the blocks, you know. Because when I attack the offensive guard and drive him back, it opens up a huge hole where Margus can go in there and, and make the block fairly easily. We're so competitive here at SMU. Like a lot of the players just want to go out there and do whatever they can to help the team benefit. And even no matter if it's on field goal block or punt, they're going to go out there and try the hardest. In this day and age, it's so rare to find athletes that have that kind of unselfishness. What we do, what we ask those guys to do is hard. I mean, that's hard work in there. You're banging against big bodies and pounding it up in there, you know, all day long. And so for when you see our linebackers, Yuri, Jaguarit, 
compete, when you see them make plays, the credit really has to go to Taylor and the guys up front. Isabel flushed out. Taylor Thompson's right there waiting for him. And Thompson has the sack at the UAB. This year, you know, I can actually like recognize certain plays, recognize schemes that the offense is doing, and that helps me a lot. The biggest thing that helped me this season is just knowledge of football and experience, you know, knowing how to play defensive end, knowing how the offensive line is going to block has really benefited me a lot this year. Taylor's physical gifts have carried him this far. Now it's a matter of how much he can learn and how far he can take his football career. Taylor's progress over time, he's, he's just gotten better and better. And if he continues uh, on the same rate that he's uh, progressed at this point, he's going to be a very good football player before he leaves here. He's gone into a situation with Coach Hill where he's learned how to be a player. I mean, he's learned how to use his hands, how to play blocks, how to do all the things a great defensive lineman can do. He has a chance, I think, to be a National Football League player. Coming backside, and then Taylor Thompson finishes off the sack at the four-yard line. Yeah, I would be really excited if I got the chance to play in the NFL. I think that's a really great opportunity to have, like, just both in life and in football. Here's a guy that has taken some raw material, came here with a desire to work, got coached, and now, I think in another year, we'll be one of those guys that will sit around and say, okay, on draft day, where's he going to go? When we come back, homecoming brings big names to campus. It's really great time to be able to see friends that you hadn't seen in 20 or 30 years. 